Hi everyone. Yeah, it's difficult or rather easy when you talk soon after the break, when everybody is energized. <laughs> Sometimes it makes the job very easy. Sometimes it makes it difficult. And I'll try to make it more easy for myself. Uh, I'll take you through a brief history about CITL as an organization and uh, share some of my thoughts uh, about my own experience in HR. And uh, I want to sound you off that you might, some of you might find me a bit radical in my thoughts around HR. Some of the business people I see here in the room would find it more cohesive when I say so, because I would be talking a language of business in the terms of HR, right? So CITL is, is, uh, is now a French company. We have been recently taken over by the uh, biggest French group called Acticol. And uh, we are now known as the Acticol CITL group. Over around 75,000 folks globally, uh, CITL is not only a call center. Uh, CITL, along with Acticol, provides an array of services in terms of the CRM solutions, the learning solutions, consulting, technology solutions, and some of our, some of our uh, solutions which are, which are very innovative. I'll, I'll share with you some of those which might be interesting to many of you. We recently launched a, a, a tool or an application called Customer Experience 101. How many of you have heard of it? Maybe after this you will remember it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a free solution that we provided to everybody who wants to make a career in, in call center or BP organizations. And, and that's, that's how, how this whole CITEL Actical group looks like. Philippines is, is very strategic from a, from a CITEL and group Actical's uh, presence point of view. It's probably the largest geography outside of America and probably fastest growing region in the world of, of CITEL. Uh, CITEL's commitment to Philippines is, is also synonymous to what I see uh, somewhere the Philippines government and PESA organizations talking about. And, and uh, the thought around it is, it's, it's a well said saying that a nation's progress depends on how developed its villages are. And that's the focus CITEL wants to instill in Philippines. We, we, we have our focus on growing in, in provinces. If you, if you look at the, the, the trend of, of growth of IT BPM organization in over the last 10, 15 years, you could see a significant improvement, a significant increase in the provincial headcount share uh, in this sector. We, this, this sector started somewhere around early 2000. And, and, and today, the movement of offshore units, uh, different BPO setups, different BPO organizations setting their shops in provinces has substantially gone up. And in last three years, it's steady. And when I, when I share CITEL's roadmap, you might see it sounds similar to you. And that's the focus CITEL wants to bring in that how do we take care of this rich talent pool in Philippines in our provinces? Because they're easy to, to hire, they're easy to train, they're easy to develop. Uh, this, is the, this is the snapshot of, of CITEL's presence in Philippines. By far, we are, we are largest uh, in Metro Manila. Uh, we are present in Baguio, we are present in Tarlac. Few weeks ago, we we just launched officially our our newest site in Puerto Princesa in Palawan, and uh, people thought that it's only a destination for travel. We wanted to make it a BPO destination as well. We are probably the first entrant, or first player in that region, and and we want to take that benefit. Uh, I'd, I'd like to play a video. My technical team can they help me play a video? Of, of something that uh, we tried doing some innovation in, in, in the hiring space. Can you play the video? 
My name is Christine Joy Regualos. I'm a technical support representative in CITEL. I am originally from Balabac Island, which is half day far from Puerto Princesa. Well, I heard about CITEL last year and I just gave it a try and then they gave me a call. While we were delivering some medicines, I saw a flyer of CITEL saying that they are opening a site here in Puerto Princesa. Luckily, um, I was endorsed to CITEL Academy special class. I realized just how CITEL is very much devoted when it comes to taking care of its people. My name is Christine Joy Regualos. My name is Clark and I'm a learning specialist for CITEL Academy. I am Marisol Aljani, a Palawenio and proud CITEL Academy graduate. So this word CITEL Academy <laughs> might be sounding you something like an academy or an education institute or a learning center, but it's our hiring center. And we give free of cost training to people to learn basics of BPO and call center. We make them ready for, for a call center job. We pay them for getting that training. And they get the first right to refuse if they don't want to join CITEL. That's, that's the commitment we want to instill in, in, in our provincial uh, population. We want to grow there. We want to ensure that we are doing enough to train this population to get a good amount of insight into the BPO career. And, and our tool, CX101, is one of the, one of the instruments that helps us uh, get people more closer to, to what, what, what the experience of, of call center and BPO work is. Somewhere, you know, over a period, over, over many years, uh, this whole notion of taking call, customer experience has been highly made complex and we want to make it uncomplicated. We want to make it simple for people to understand. It's, it's very easy when you wake up every day morning and think of what do I do today, and the first thing in your mind should be that how can I make my customer's life happy today? And that's the aim we want to instill in our every individual. You could see some of, some of the graph and statistics that, that's talking about uh, CITEL's uh, experience, and we have a tagline, we, we two years ago acquired a tagline called Experience Shared. We believe that Every CITEL, 75,000 CITEL employees who connect with 2.5 million customers every day can provide significant amount of their own experiences and share their experiences with people. In the space of BPO where, you know, there is this so-called term, though I don't believe in that term, uh, called millennials, uh, not many of us are millennials, but still, this whole concept of millennials need something different, it's, it's very confusing. Because I don't find anything different in 20 years that has happened from what Maslow's brought in hierarchy of need. And that need hierarchy has never changed. The basic needs have remained same. The generations have changed. Technological advancements have happened. What has not changed in the is, is the need of every individual that lies in their heart every day they will wake up and go to their office. What has changed in the last 20 years is the manifestation of those needs. People express it in different fashion, but the needs have remained same. And that's the core of CITEL's whole engagement platform around, and you know, I, I get again paranoid with some of these words, which I call draconian, uh, C-suite, you know, uh, they don't exist today. There is nothing called C-suite. We believe in E-suite, you know. An E-suite means employee suite. What we did recently is, and, and that, that's, something, that's something very, very radical that I thought uh, some of our leaders, and, and Richard knows, Craig is very vocal about it many a times. We removed the boardrooms from our offices. There are no boardrooms in CITEL Philippines. We don't have even a room for a CEO. We don't have a room for a CFO. We don't have a room for chief human resource officer. We don't have a room for anyone. Every one of us sit in open. 
And if I can explain you, and I would love if you could come to my place and see the sites that we have, beautiful sites. We have a workplace where me, my CEO, my CFO, and some of our top leaders, we sit on exactly the same tables that, that an agent would sit while taking the call. And next to us is a cafeteria. And between the so-called open C-suite and cafeteria, there are some ping pong tables. And there is an Xbox where people come and, and get themselves release, uh, stress released uh, during their breaks. And that was very funny for me. You know, I was I a was bit, bit, bit apprehensive that how will it work? You have a CEO taking some calls, which might be, which might be very difficult to take in an open space. I'm taking a call, talking about compensation about someone, and suddenly one ping pong ball crosses my table. <laughs> and, and what we saw was employees themselves were very apprehensive. First, first few days, they used to play, and the ball used to come, and they used to say, can, we, can I take it? Can I take the ball? And they were, they were worried that, you know, how do we barge into this so-called leadership space? Today, they don't do that. Because either half of the time we send those balls, we just throw it to them, or they just walk in and collect it. And that's my concept of empowerment and engagement at workplaces. We have some of these forums, you know, you could see pictures, and I have a video that I'll show later on to you. Uh, we, we, we believe in engagement that has to happen at all levels. We have different engagement platforms for individuals at agent level, at coach level, at mid-level management level, at senior management level. So when you see director's round table, it's a quarterly round table, where what we do is we, we get all of our senior directors in a room, get someone external speaker talk to them, who's not from CITEL, doesn't know ABCD of CITEL, talks about an outsider's perspective about our business, and maybe share their own thoughts. That's the way we engage our population in educating them that what's happening around beyond CITEL. And, you know, Craig, who's our CEO, uh, he, he loves one program, and that's called Chill with Craig. It's a program which is, which is hosted by himself. He is the host of the program. And the visitors or the invitees are some of the award winners, those who have won award in last quarter. And the strength could be hundreds. And, and, and they come in, they share stage with him in a lighthearted conversation which, which aims at connecting with people because the whole crux of the call center or, or BPO business is the connect. You connect with your people. Because I remember, you know, uh, one, of, one, of my, one of my senior leader a few years ago, some 10, 12 years ago, uh, he was explaining that this whole concept of customer experience revolves around two set of people. One, those who support the customers. Second, those, those who support those who support the customers. There is no third category. And we all sitting in this room are the people of the second category. We support them, who, those who support the customer. And that's where our job is more, more complex, our job is more important, our job is more strategic. We measure our employee satisfaction uh, in terms of NPS. How many of you are familiar with the term NPS? Good. So NPS is, just to, just to brief every one of you, an NPS is nothing but net promoter score. So when you do a survey, you would have some people not so happy, some people in between, and some people extremely happy. And the net promoter score is a factor of number of promoters versus number of detractors. So more the promoters are, your net promoter score would be in the positive of the number. And if more the detractors are, your net promoter scores would be below zero or in the negative, And it can range between minus 100 to plus 100. When we launched this survey last year, uh, our last to last year, that is around 2015, uh, our net promoter score was in the range of 10 plus, somewhere around 11 or 12. Last year, when we did the same survey, our net promoter score was 18.8, which was probably the second best globally in CITEL. 
we measured another another aspect of of uh, employee satisfaction by by a question called how many of you would stay longer in CITEL? And again, that particular question saw a significant improvement over the last two years. And if you could see the trajectory of the growth in CITEL in, in Philippines, uh, we have seen our major growth in the last three years. We have grown significantly around 35 plus percent in, in, in Philippines. I'll take you through a snapshot of uh, how CITEL worked on the whole employee life cycle. And, and my personal belief is people stay with you. People develop stickiness to an organization. If from the day one, they see or they're able to see where can I go or how long I can go in this organization. And this is a symbolic chart that talks about when an agent joins CITEL, we not only tell the agent that we will pay you well, you will have a best place to work, you will have best barkadas to be part of, but there is a long career for you in CITEL. And what you need to do to, to grow into that career, it's not about preaching them about how will you grow, but it's also showing them the way or the path and train them for, for, for those roles to come in. So, when you see an applicant, CITEL Academy is a platform that generally we, we try to hire people through. It's, it's by far uh, any means much economic way of hiring better talent. Uh, our, our dependencies on vendors is hardly around 30%, but 70% of our talent pool is directly hired, and, and majority of that is through CITEL Academy. When an agent spent reference, referenceable time in, in the organization, that's the time we kick in a program called Growth Point. Now, Growth Point is a program which is developed, crafted, and prepared to grow people into the coach roles. So people who are from BPO or people who are from, from uh, that kind of uh, work segment, you know, that, that most of the BPOs are very less hierarchical organizations. We generally have four layers. You have frontline people who support the customers. You have first-line supervision, which are coaches or team leaders. Your second-line supervision, which is your managers, and your fourth line, which is your top leadership. And what we have is, for every level, we have a program. So people know that if I'm at a particular level, how do I grow to the next level? So Coach Growth Point is a program that prepares people uh, getting into the coach roles. We recently piloted an, an, a, an innovative practice in our newest site in Palawan, where we thought that there is a notion that only people coming from BPO can do well in BPO. Now, there are, there are too many organizations, the talent pool is limited, the demand is extensively high, you cannot keep churning the same talent. You need to develop talent. You need to tap new areas to bring in talent. And one of the ways, how can we rely on those who are probably not ready today, but can we make them ready? And the project Pathfinders was one of the initiatives that we took, that can we take people from other areas of other industries and other areas of work, including colleges, can we train them and can we make them our first-line supervisors? We took a batch of around 20 candidates, and I'm very happy to say that 18 of them have successfully completed and deployed in our newest site in Palawan. And by the way, that site is running with less than 2% attrition. <laughs> the next program is, again, the extension of Coach Growth Point, which is Manager Growth Point, that talks about how do you prepare your coaches to a second-level managerial positions. 
in the last program is is something called voyages which is which is our key talent development program which prepares some of these fine managers into our directors and directors are typically the business unit owners whom we call directors and senior directors they are our top line because after that there is a senior leadership in the organization so when you when you, when a new entrant looks at very clearly what is in it for me and and i'm just giving an example of cytel but 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 the message is for everyone that and and i keep saying this that retention is an art and attrition is a science people mix up both the things most of the time you require an artisan to really instill that confidence in the individual so that they get retained but at the same time attrition is a number game and you need a science behind playing around with it and we did it some or other way so despite ups and downs despite 37% growth in last 3 years we have been pretty lower than 5% in our attrition year over year we have grown roughly 77% of our positions internally and these are the program that that fuel that growth in people when we go and tell people that we are growing and and bpo grows in a linear fashion so if your business volume comes in and you have to hire 500 agents you just imagine for every 500 agents you will need roughly around 20 to 25 coaches 10 to 15 managers and couple of directors now where are they going to come from not everyone will come from outside they all will 75% of them will come from this group and that builds confidence in people that yes here is an organization where i have a long term career path and and one of my one of my learning and understanding about about retention in organization is that no one wakes up in the morning and walks toward the company with the idea in mind that i'm going to leave this company today no one does that the idea comes in when they report to the work and the experience that they go through at the workplace that drives the behavior should i stay here or should i leave and i think activities like this programs like this could help organizations build a robust retention platform engagement platform you know i call it uh, dnd which is dance and drama which most of the time the hr team is associated with and i would like to disassociate with that the hr acumen and qualification is not to arrange dance and drama for that you can hire event managers and that that that's where i lend my last slide about my own learning and experience and what what do i expect hr to to come to uh, when it comes to supporting the business these are some of my personal insights uh, pardon me if i would have overarched on some of some of your personal thoughts but my my belief is that growth of hr will not be linear business will grow linear headcount will grow linear but growth of hr will not be linear we need to learn to delink it so not that every time 200 people getting added or 300 people getting added in your organization you will need to add one hr person there hr will have to evolve and think of different ways that how can we strategize how can we optimize how can we enrich our work and that's where my this whole concept of dnd comes in away from dance and drama to design and development how hr can contribute to the business growth in a more strategic way by addressing the issues that are required to be addressed as i told there are no c suites this all e suite and hence your every employee is expecting a good amount of insights from hr fast agile fearless and effective whenever name of hr comes a a concept of stagnation comes in hr is generally referred in in industry that oh you know looks like i'll have to refer it to hr that means something bad is going to happen <laughs> or you know what i did that but now it's with hr i don't know when it will come out from them i think we are so much ingrained in our processes policies structures that somewhere we forget about the basics of why we do business here no business can run faster and successful 
if your HR team is not agile, your HR team is not fast enough to respond to what is needed. And that's when, you know, my another paranoid point that value add, you know, most of the time, and, and this is my message to the whole HR group, don't be self-critical. You add value, that's why you are there, otherwise you won't be there. So don't ever think that does HR adds value. Why does that question never ask to a CFO that does your team adds value? How, anybody, anybody from finance in this room? How many times your, 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 your CEO would have asked a finance person that what value you bring to the table? Because finance is inevitable, right? So HR. And for me, HR is not an HR practitioner. HR is everybody. My personal belief is you don't need, H HR is not rocket science. HR is a very simple way of life. Anybody can be an HR person as long as he or she has an aptitude for people, understanding for people, and understanding the psyche of people that where it helps them and where to help them. We have experimented recently, some of our team members where we filled attrition, we have, we have backfilled those positions from operations. Some of, some of my newest HR partners and HR generalists were coaches, were managers in the operation. And I find them, it's very interesting because they were at the recipient end earlier. Now they are at the delivery end, so they understand. And they understand more because they know what the problem today your every team, every team manager faces. So I think my, my second focus would be that HR need to be very agile, very fast. Technology solutions will play a major role. You know, how many of you have heard of, this is a buzzword today, artificial intelligence, bots coming in, taking over jobs of human being, right? That's, that's a perceived threat today in the, in the technology world. And I call it perceived threat because the same threat was there when industrialization happened. When the concept of mass production came in, same threat was raised by trade unions that you will bring machines of mass production, jobs will go away. Incidentally, jobs grew. And then the BPO came in, and, and the whole outsourcing came in, the whole question came in again, that jobs will go away, it will eat up people's job. I haven't seen anybody's jobs going away. Yeah, jobs will transform. The, the shape and the look of the jobs will change. Bots or artificial intelligence is to make our life easy. It's there to help us make effective business decisions. It's, it's there to help us make effective people decisions. It's not there to replicate or replace a human being. Human touch will always be there as long as people are your asset and people are there to deliver things. Data analytics, trends and solutions. This is the language your business leader would want you to do every day. Talk about your numbers. Every HR person in, in any organization should know their numbers on fingertips. The numbers that you play in day in, day out, your headcount, your attrition, your trends, who's doing good, who's not doing good, what help is needed. But that's where your business would look up to you to provide support to them. Your business leader may not have insight to everything that you will have as an HR professional. This is, this is a very interesting topic I, I want to touch upon, and that's, that's solve for associate capability, alternate career options. Historically, the, the HR focus has been around creating career paths. Even in my earlier slide, I, I spoke about, we build career paths to take people away from phones. When the name of career comes in, how many of you from BPOs? Okay, not many, so I might sound very strange. We generally try to, to build career paths to take people away from phone. And what we are doing, we are doing discredit to our organization. Because we earn money because there are people who are productive taking calls for longer time. And if you siphon them out so frequently, then you are, you are actually doing a discredit to your organization by diminishing the productive population. So one of the innovative way that's, that the organization need to look at that how can we increase agent life cycle? You know, I worked in aircraft manufacturing industry and defense aircraft manufacturing industry for 10 years. And one of the terms that, that, that is used in, 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 in defense is um, aircraft life extension. 
And is this term is used uh, when every aircraft, every machine has a life. But aircrafts are, are, are costly machines, you know, you don't produce them uh, too often. So when an aircraft reaches to its, its life, there are ways by which you can do some amount of reconfiguration or modifications in the aircraft and extend its life for some many years. And that extension can go from five to ten years. I thought of bringing the same concept here that generally an agent who, who's in a call, call taking business becomes optimally productive to the organization between, between nine to twelve months. That's when you take return on investment of the person. And that's exactly the time when people start looking jobs outside that role. What should we do? And we did a study. We did a study and, and, and I, I did the same study in my previous organization. If you do an attrition analysis and what we figured out that 45% of the agents who have attrited have gone and joined competitor doing the same job. So why not you do the same job with me? So what is the trigger? I was reading a book in the morning which talks about habit. And, and habits form because there is a clue always. That clue triggers a change in habit. And then you get into a routine of it. And the clue here, or a trigger here for a job change, is not that I want to go away from work. 45% of the agents leave organization for as low as 1,000 pesos. So if you, run a, if you run an economics around it and see that if, if I retain this agent probably by paying something similar to that, what kind of value that agent can bring to me? So we are running at an organization can run with 7-8% attrition. A BPO with the size of 10,000, if running at 7% attrition, that means roughly around 700 people you're losing every month, right? If by extending an agent life and giving what they want, you're saving 1% attrition. That means you're saving 70 people per month. Generally in BPO, the, the cost of an employee hire is roughly around 150 to 200 dollars. And the cost of training and cost of first three to six months of their salary is even more than that. Average take it around say 400 dollars and convert it into a 70 people saving every month and multiply it by year. 12 months, you can get the amount of saving that the organization generates versus the cost that you actually incur in paying this few, few hundred thousand pesos to the individual to stay in the organization. We did this exercise. And you would be astonished to see, and I'll not quote the name of organization where, where I did this. Uh, in the lines of business where we were, we were running this pilot, we were running at 7.5% attrition. We run a pilot, we say, okay, we will, we will move 10% of people into this extended agent life with probably, you know, uh, increased targets, increased money, everything increased. So there is an excitement and the skin in the game. This group posted for first year 1.7% attrition. And that's where I say it's a science. Retention is a mix of science and art, and that's what we need to look at. And that's where I say that, you know, agent capability, build agent capability, build alternate career path. More and more we retain people behind phones, we are saving money for organization, we are saving money uh, for our investors, and we are getting better returns as an organization. Mobile talent acquisition, and when I say mobile doesn't mean uh, talent acquisition platforms available on the mobile or a handphone or cell phone. A lot of companies are selling this product these days. I'm saying mobile talent acquisition means how can we build a talent acquisition model that makes you capable of hiring people on a fly? We did that pilot in some of the provincial sites. And what we did was we created mobile vans, which talks about Cytel and its story, and they move around in the province. It, gives, it, gave, it gave us good amount of visibility in the market. You would be surprised that 30% of my talent pool was attracted by these mobile vans. 
And that, that, was a, that was an anecdotal example in a very lighter sense, but when I say mobile talent acquisition solutions, you need to look at continuously changing talent acquisition techniques. Because today the talent is limited and the buyers are too many. Unless you are attractive enough, unless you are exciting enough, people will not come to you. It's not your choice to hire them, it's their choice to join you. So how do you convert your choice to hire from their choice to join is what is important for us as an organization and as, as an industry as a whole. Last and foremost is flexible rewards. You know, gone the days when there were fixed structures, people want today, what suits me, can you give me that? And therefore as an organization, can we make a flexible reward options for people that makes them comfortable, that helps them achieve their economic goal. At the same time, making the organizations able to manage that flex within their economic reach. I think collectively, all these things will emphasize somewhere there's a greater concept of business partnership comes in. And that's, that's where I would like to end my, my experience sharing with you that HR need to go away from so-called engagement employee relation resource to a business partner. Because until you do that, business won't partner with you. And that is the change that that industry is seeing, that is the change we need to bring in. And I think we can, we can bring in that and add lot of value to our own profile and our own fraternity as an HR fraternity, making it more agile, swift business solution from an HR point of view. And, and before that, I, I, would, I would give a, a quick uh, video around uh, one of the product that Cytel has. Please go on. In case you missed it, the term customer experience is everywhere in business these days. Experts agree that focusing on the customer experience has become the single most important factor for an organization to achieve business success. In fact, companies spend a great deal of money and time training and hiring competent advisors who can deliver an excellent customer experience. What's the main purpose? To maintain current customers and gain new ones. So, are you interested in a customer experience career and want to know more about it? That's the aim of this MOOC titled CX101, Becoming a Customer Experience Advisor. This MOOC is accessible to everyone. The only things you need are a reliable internet connection, a computer, tablet or smartphone, and a great interest in learning in a new and exciting way. This multimedia-rich and interactive MOOC spreads over four weeks with one episode released each week. You follow the course at your own pace because each episode is flexible. Along with other participants, you'll learn, exchange ideas and experiences together online. Everyone works at their own pace over a given period to validate new skills in a fun and innovative way. Quizzes and forms will allow you to assess your progress. In four weeks, we'll show you the basic steps to become an effective and professional customer experience advisor. First, we'll start with getting you familiar with the operation of the learning platform and introduce your peers participating in the course. Then, we'll take a look at a series of topics related to the core practices of customer relations. What do you get at the end of this MOOC? Every week, you'll earn badges which validate what you've learned and allow you to obtain a MOOC certificate. This certificate is a valued VIP pass in the recruitment process at Cytel. Any questions on the content? Don't panic. You're not alone. A community manager accompanies you online throughout the course, providing support if you need it. Are you passionate about finding a new career path? Do you like helping people? Then we'll see you on the MOOC. Thank you. So, before I end, to you know, the beautiful people of this great country, as they say, Maramim Salamat. <laughs> <laughs>